Welcome to this chapter of the rebuilding of the 62TE transmission. This chapter is divided into three parts, teardown, subassemblies, and reassembly. In this part, you'll learn about the assembly of this unit, the reassembly of this unit. My name is Bill Brayton, and I'll be your host for this chapter. It's a great day to fix transmission, so let's get started. After the low reverse clutch and the two four clutch clearances have been checked and adjusted, remove the remove both the clutch packs and set them aside. Now we are going to install the rear planet and move on with the unit assembly. Next, hold the planet in the case and put the shim, the gear, and the cuffed washer and the bolt into the planet. Remember to always use fresh thread locking compound on the bolt. Now we can install the holding fixture onto the transfer shaft and torque the bolt to 200 foot-pounds. It's a lot of torque. Next, using an inch-pound torque wrench, check output shaft turning torque. Output shaft turning torque should be within 3 to 8 inch-pounds. If the turning torque is too high, install a 1.5 thousandths inch, 1.5 thousandths thicker shim. If the turning torque is too low, install one and a half, one and a half thousandths thinner shim. Repeat until the proper turning torque of three to eight inch pounds is installed. Next, after the turning torque has been checked and adjusted, we can turn the transmission over and start loading the subassemblies into the case. We will start with the low reverse clutch pack. Remember to leave out the top friction so we can install the flat snap ring. That would be a look at the low and reverse clutches right there. I'm getting ready to load them up into the uh, into the case. Remember to leave that top snap top friction out so we can install that flat snap ring. There we go. Remember the flat snap ring in the lower groove in the case is installed with the opening between the two and three o'clock position. Now we can install the last low reverse friction plate and the pressure plate. Be sure the bevel side of the pressure plate faces up. Next, install the tapered snap ring with the flat side down and the opening between the 9 and 10 o'clock position. Finally, tap the snap ring in various spots to seat it into the cage. Case. Next, install the two four clutches and steels. Start with the friction plate and finish with a steel plate on top. Remember, these are the thicker clutches and steels. Now install the return spring and line up the tab on the spring with the slot in the case as shown. Next, install the housing into the case. Okay, we have the housing in and we need to compress the housing to install the snap ring into the groove. Now the common method here is to install the snap ring into the case and use a hammer and a screwdriver to smartly tap that snap ring into the groove and then work it all the way around into the groove. It's quite simple. Now after the, uh, let's see, now after the clutch, clutch packs and the piston retainer have been installed, we can install the sun gear to planet thrust bearing with the flat side facing up and the rear sun gear. Next install the sun gear to front planet thrust bearing, also with the flat side facing up. Now after the sun gear and bearings are installed, use a twisting motion to install the front planet. Next, use the same twisting motion to install the front sun gear slash hub assembly. Now install the four tang washer onto the front hub slash sun gear assembly. So now before installing the input drum into the case, Use a small amount of assembly gel to stick the number four thrust plate onto the clutch hub. This washer may be changed when we check final unit end play. Next, install the input drum into the transmission case. Give the drum a twist back and forth to engage the splines. When the input drum is fully seated, in, in, fully seated the input speed sensor ring will be in the middle of the input speed sensor hole. Okay, after the input drum is in, be sure to install the pump to input drum thrust bearing. 
be sure the lip of the bearing is facing up. Now the next step is to check transmission end play. To check this clearance, we're going to use our trusty H gauge. Place the long legs where the pump gasket rides and tighten the screws. Next, place the plunger on top of the thrust bearing as shown and tighten the screw. Now place the gasket onto the pump and turn the H gauge over and set it on the pump. The gap between the pump and the plunger is transmission end clearance and can be measured with a feeler gauge. Choose the correct number 4 washer to get the desired end clearance of 5 to 25 thousandths from the table on the next page. Here we have the chart to choose the correct number 4 washer based on readings from the previous page. Next, install a new O-ring on the cooler bypass valve and install the bypass valve into the bore, sh bore shown. Now we can install a new pump gasket and guide studs before we install the front pump. Next, lube the pump O-ring and install the pump housing into the case. Now, replace the brass washers with new washers from the kit. Install the bolts and torque them to 22 foot-pounds. Okay, so after the pump has been installed, let's turn the case over uh, with the bell housing side facing down and install the remote pinion gear and cover into the case. Now install 10 number 30 Torx bolts and torque them to 12 foot-pounds. Next, use snap ring pliers to pick up the underdrive planet assembly and install it in, into the case. Now we are going to use our H gauge to check compounder end play. First mount the H gauge on the low clutch step and place the plunger on the helical shim inside the planet. Next, tighten the thumb screw. Now carefully remove the H gauge from the case and turn it over and place it on the compounder so the plunger is over the sun gear. The gap between the plunger and the gear is the compounder end clearance. The clearance needs to be 10 to 20 thousandths and is adjusted by changing the helical shim in the planet. Now after the end play has been checked and adjusted, Install the compounder into the case. So now we've got the compounder, uh, it's been seated in the case. So we're going to install the snap ring, the tapered snap ring, flat side down. Next, install the shim, the output gear, and the nut. Now let's lay the unit down and install the gear holding tool. That's Miller tool number 9739 and torque the nut to 200 foot-pounds. Next, we can turn the unit up and install the output gear bolt retaining strap, the bolt lock tab plate, and the retaining bolts. This setup keeps the output shaft bolt from coming loose. Torque the bolts to 16 foot-pounds. Now, use a punch to stake the nut on the transfer gear. Next, install the oil scavenger as shown. The, this plastic piece will snap into the place. Now place a bead of Mopar RTV silicone onto the case. This will conclude part two of the 62TE reassembly. We want to thank you for participating in our virtual training solutions powered by ATRA. Until next time, let's keep fixing transmissions together.